Today's subject. Methem... Methamine. That's right, Jesse. Today we're going to be making some of the good shit. However, before we do any of the cooking, I think I first have to tell you what even methylamine is. And no, not the breaking bad stuff, the actual stuff. So first of all, methylamine is extremely similar to ammonia, which means it's a gas with an extremely high solubility in water. And just like ammonia, it has an extremely foul smell. In terms of chemistry, methylamine is used in many interesting reactions like reduction reactions or just as a chemical building block. It's basically an extremely handy compound to have in an organic lab. When it comes to smell, in contrast to ammonia, instead of an irritating smell comparable to decomposing piss, it has an extremely foul smell similar to that of rotting fish. So. How do we make the fish juice? Simple. Here's a stamide and it was made in a previous video. And to go from this to methylamine, all we have to do is pluck out this carbonyl group from that stamide. And to do that, I'll be using a really popular reaction called Hoffman's rearrangement. And if you watch for example Nyred or just know some of the chemistry, you may know it as the reaction used to make hydrazine from urea. So let's go. So to start, I've dissolved 10 grams of astamide in water. I've actually tested it to see if I should even use it in this reaction. And it did seem to have a similar melting point to the literature. However, it was pretty off. Next, I've added 20 grams of calcium hypochlorite to some water, which is basically solid bleach. Keep in mind, not everything will dissolve and that's fine. So I've transferred the astamide solution into a 1 liter free neck boiling flask and then I've mixed up some sodium hydroxide solution in another flask. Trust me, all of this is crucial. So to start, I've added a portion of the calcium hypochlorite solution into the reaction flask. Upon addition, the color changes from strong brown to greenish. Apparently this reaction is temperature sensitive, so it's important to cool it. Right, so the temperature wasn't really changing, so in one go, I've added the rest of the calcium hypochlorite slurry. And finally, when I was ready to start, I've added the sodium hydroxide solution and I stoppered the neck off. And finally, to begin, I've turned on the heating. What's happening here is a reaction known as the Hoffman rearrangement, and basically this is a reaction where you can convert a primer amide into a primary amine. So first the hydroxide group from the sodium hydroxide takes away a proton of the acetamide, leaving the nitrogen with an extra electron. Then a chlorine radical, aka a single chlorine atom coming from the calcium hypochlorite, connects itself to the nitrogen to take the nitrogen's extra electron. Then a new double bond is formed between the carbon and the nitrogen, and then chlorine detaches itself from the molecule into the solution. Now we're almost at the late game. Next, an isocyanate intermediate is formed, which reacts with a water molecule to form methylcarbamic acid. And finally, by removing that pesky carbon and two oxygens, we're left with methylamine and CO2 gas. However, now we have a problem. First of all, this reaction is in an equilibrium as long as there's CO2 present, which basically means everything here is reversible. So by turning up the heat, the solution can heat up and the solubility of the carbon dioxide in the water decreases and it flies out of the solution, out of the flask and it finally goes back where it belongs which is the ozone layer. And now there is no way for the reaction to go back, leaving us with methylamine. Anyway, if you're observant, you may notice a tube leading out of one of the necks, and that leads to a gas trap filled with hydrochloric acid solution. Once the methylamine gas touches the HCl solution, it reacts with the hydrochloric acid in an acid-based reaction, and it resolves in a cool salt called methylammonium chloride, or methylamine HCl as it's known. As the solution heats up, more calcium hypochlorite should dissolve and react with the acetamide. Then, a very harsh color change from light green to yellowish took place, which is a telltale sign of a Hoffman rearrangement happening. This can also be observed when instead of acetamide, you use urea to eat hydrazine instead of methylamine. To see if we're producing a highly basic gas, I've dipped a wet pH paper into the reaction flask. The dense white fumes immediately react with the pH paper, turning it alkaline. That means that we're on a good track. As the solution got hotter, around the point of 70 C, a bunch of gas evolution happened, which means that CO2 is now being systematically removed from the solution, slowly pushing the equilibrium in our favor. You can notice this gas evolution at the output, and you can see it's quite intense. The bubble that contains all of the gas is also getting randomly smaller, which means the gas is dissolving in the output. Once the solution reached near boiling temperatures, the solution started intensely bubbling. That's because carbon dioxide and methylamine gas at these temperatures are practically insoluble in water. Alright, so it's growing pretty strong, but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna die out in a minute. So I'm going to try to smell the methylamine while I can. Okay, let's go. Smell test. Ugh. It felt like I was violated or something. I think this is the methylamine solution and you can see how it's basically fuming. The reason why I've reacted like this is because it doesn't hurt or anything, but it's extremely unpleasant. Also, I'm not gonna hide it, I've already smelled methylamine and also a kind of cousin when it comes to smell is pyridine. However, I haven't smelled it this concentrated <laughs> before, so yeah, that was a, an experience.
I also really like how I've accidentally dropped a litmus paper into the solution and because of the gas production, it started breakdancing. And as the bubbling died down a little, I've deemed the reaction to be mostly complete. Now it's time to purify the product. So to start off the purification process, I first filtered the output solution from some toilet paper to get rid of some of the floating junk. Then I've put it on a hot plate and I've boiled it to dryness. And I may or may not have underestimated how fast the water would evaporate. So I came into the room and suddenly all the water is gone into smoking. However, eventually it did die down. And we've had some interesting precipitate on the bottom. So I've added some water into the beaker. Now for some reason, when it comes to methylamine HCl solubility in water, there's a bunch of conflict information. For example, Ligma Aldrich says it's 1 gram per liter, Fisher Scientific says it's 10 grams per liter, and both of my videos say that, damn, something's probably soluble here. And this one just straight up says that it's insoluble and soluble on the same page, like what the fuck? Anyway, the reason why I've dissolved this in water is so I can do this. This is a sodium hydroxide pellet, and since mephalamine is a strong base and ammonia is a weak base, then the sodium hydroxide should first liberate the ammonia from the solution. Anyway, once I've dropped it in, I've started boiling the solution again to dryness, and you can see the litmus paper turn green on exposure to the steam, which means something was liberated. However, I couldn't really smell any ammonia and it just... smelled fishy. God damn it. Anyway, eventually it looks quite holy and I've let it crystallize. In the meantime, I've managed to capture a very nice visual of the methyl ammonium chloride crystallizing in real time. Anyway, to this precipitate I've added some DCM. Usually you use chloroform for stuff like this, but I've decided to use DCM because it's cheaper. Also Naira did it, so it's probably okay. Allegedly, the DCM should pull out all the dimethylamine HCl from the precipitate. Once there was no more DCM, I've scraped it from the filter paper and I've transferred it into the beaker. So I've added some methanol to it. Then I've put the methanol methylamine HCl solution on a hot plate and I've waited for as much of the methylamine HCl to dissolve. Then I've put it through a filter and once it was pulled through, I've started evaporating the methanol. After around two thirds of the solution evaporated, I transferred it into a beaker and I let it crystallize out. Anyway, here's the methylamine HCl block and I've scooped everything, put it into another filter and I've washed it with some cold methanol to get rid of that uh, yellow stuff. Anyway, I've used way too much methanol, so a majority of our product was pulled into the yellow sheet. Anyway, the color finally started looking good and I've put it on a jar cup and turned on the heating. After it looks dry, I've scraped it on another jar cup and I've weighed it. To be honest, I didn't know what to expect and when I saw the scale, I felt a tear in my eye. In the end, we've got around 0.09 grams of mostly pure methylamine HCl and it's such a bad yield that I've barely built up the courage to put it into the calculator. And we've got 0% of yield. Fuck! However... The rest of our beloved beautiful methylamine is still in the methanol, which means I didn't fuck it up completely. So I've evaporated all of the extra methanol and here we've got the rest of the methylamine HCl. Anyway, I've measured the impure stuff's melting point from the methanol wash and I think it was close enough. However, during the melting point test it started smoking and that made it even more yellow. So I've decided to scrap this portion since I really want the pure stuff for the title. Anyway, I've saved this methylamine HCl in this really cool bottle. Originally, I was planning on making this methylamine to make adrenaline later, however, I've made so little that I'll probably repeat this procedure off camera. Anyway, when it comes to adrenaline, it's going to be pretty hard on its own and, and making methylamine is probably the easiest part overall. 